Thank you, Dr. Grover, Dr. Baluja. This is the subject of my talk today. For nearly a century, till 1973, the traditional method of fixing a full thickness skin graft was by the tie over bolus technique and a compressive bandage. The bolus was meant to keep the graft and its bed in contact. The compressive dressing was applied to prevent hematoma and also to immobilize the muscles around the graft bed. Fox in 1976 confined his patients to bed rest for 24 hours and allowed only bathroom privileges for the next 48 hours. Other surgeons also imposed similar restrictions. Mustade, between 1980 and 1990, also admitted his patients for seven days and continued to use the bolus. However, from 1971, 90% of my surgery, intraocular as well as extraocular, was performed on day case basis. Therefore, I did not consider that admitting a patient merely for a skin graft would be appropriate when I would let my cataract extractions and um, intraocular implants go home at the same, on the same day. I had therefore to revise a new technique Here, the graft margin, half of it is sutured with dexone sutures and before suturing the other half, I insert the dexone sutures through the graft in the depth of the bed, not tying those sutures tie the other marginal sutures and then make sure that the central sutures are lifting the graft bed and then tie them. This patient was allowed to go home within one hour of the surgery. Now devising the quilting technique was quite out of necessity. As I explained, all other surgical procedures were carried out on day case basis. The quilting sutures pass through the graft into the depth of the recipient bed. and they are removed on the seventh day. The patient is allowed full activity immediately after the operation. This is after the quilting suture technique and that would be after a bolus when there would be a hematoma under the graft. This is a diagrammatic representation. This was an advert for glue, but it serves me well to show that if this is the recipient bed, that is the graft. When the graft is lifted, the vessels get ruptured and hematoma formation takes place. So why did I devise that technique? Because an ideal technique should anchor the graft to its bed 
during the surgery as well as immediately after the surgical procedure. So the graft and the bed become a single entity. Any movement of the graft bed imparts a similar, simultaneous and equivalent motion to the graft. This movement in unison and synchrony prevents shearing. Oscular link up therefore proceeds without any hindrance and almost a hundred percent take off the graft. In over 350 grafts there was no fibrosis or rejection of the graft by the quilting technique. No elaborate dressing is required after the quilting sutures. The only dressing is an eye shield and chloramphenicol ointment to be applied for about a week. These are the donor sites. Even in a hirsute patient, the supraclicular site is quite hairless. This is the wolf graft. Wolf was an ophthalmologist who came to the UK from Austria and devised this graft. It is not necessary to use the upper lid skin unless you got a site which is hyperpigmented. In that case, skin from the upper eyelid will match quite appropriately. It is important to relieve and defat the graft and the connective tissue. We shall now see some of the examples. This is the only dressing. We had to create a hole because the other eye had corneal opacities. These are the advantages of the quitting technique. You can combine two or more grafts to make a larger graft. This may eliminate the need for local flaps. Here I have taken a very large graft from the inner arm. For this character and Thoma and the surrounding, the graft match is poor because the skin was taken from the inner arm. Ectropion after removal of basal cell carcinoma carried out elsewhere. The skin graft became fibrosed resulting in cicatricial ectropion. This graft was taken from the supraclavicular region and secured with quilting sutures with an excellent take. Even after radiotherapy there was a recurrence of this tumor six years after radiotherapy. You can see the radiotherapy damage to cornea, there is a secondary cataract and loss of eyelashes. This is the graft taken from the supraclavical region secured with quilting sutures. Normally skin grafting with the bolus technique is contraindicated in such cases. Here I have taken two skin grafts and joined them with quilting. This was a recurrence four years after radiotherapy. Both the grafts have taken well. You can see the line of junction 
Unfortunately, there was a further recurrence two or three years after the skin graft was inserted, but the graft has still remained healthy. Enucleation and evisceration, sorry, I beg your pardon, exenteration would have been indicated here, but the patient was unwilling to undergo that. Here we have reconstructed the defect of the lower eyelid with a tarsoconjunctival sliding flap from above and a full thickness skin graft secured with quilting sutures. Normally, such a separation is advised only after eight weeks if you suture the graft with bolus technique. But here, with the quilting suture, you could separate it within seven days. That is the final result. Normally, when you want to reconstruct a full thickness defect, you, the reconstruction has got to be in two layers. One of them has to be a flap bringing its own blood supply. But with the quilting technique, I was able to do two free simultaneous grafts. The mucosal graft from buccal mucosa covered by a full thickness skin graft. I did about 17 patients with this technique. Here the buccal mucosal graft is showing is almost getting necrosed and hydrolyzed. But the graft, skin graft has taken well and conjunctiva has reformed. So double free grafts are possible with the quilting technique. A much larger graft and a buccal mucosal graft. This was the worst result of the 17 cases. An 84-year-old lady with basal cell carcinoma distorting the eye, eyelid completely. So this was a large skin graft. Behind that was the buccal mucosal graft. And the graft has taken, despite the mucosal graft having hydrolyzed. It is said that two ophthalmologists have contributed significantly to the evolution of full thickness skin grafting. These were the re remarks of the reviewer. There is a saying in English that there are many ways of skinning a cat, but there's only one way of reskinning a patient, and that's with the quilting technique. Thank you very much.